This is Dean Blandino, Vice President of Officiating for the NFL, and this will be the media video for September 20th, 2013. First couple of plays are going to involve the new crown of the helmet rule. So remember, there's three components to this rule. First thing you have to do is line up your opponent. Then lower the head, then deliver a forcible blow with the crown of the helmet. So here we're looking at number 31 for Washington, and he's going to line up his opponent by taking a direct line to the running back. Okay, it doesn't have to be squared up in terms of the two players facing each other. If one player takes a direct line to the opponent, that's a lineup. So you'll see 31 is going to take a direct line, he's going to lower his head, and he's going to deliver a forcible blow with the crown of the helmet. And you slow it down, you'll see lowering the head using the crown of the helmet to deliver that blow the very top of the helmet here's a close-up replay of it to see the contact that is an example of a foul the direction to our game officials is when all three components are met and we see this type of action then the foul should be called and this was fine this week for a hit with the crown of the helmet violation of the new rule Another play from the same game, and this is a legal hit by rule. So the defender and the back are moving at an angle. The defender is going to turn his head to the side. The back is going to lower his head to absorb the blow, and there is no crown of helmet contact. You can see the contact is with the sides of the helmet. You can see the crown of each player's helmet. So this is not a violation of the rule. There is helmet to helmet contact, but not a violation of the rule because there was not a lineup. Both players were moving at an angle, and there was no crown of the helmet contact. It was side of the helmet contact. And then a play from last night's game and questions why this was not a crown of the helmet call. And the reason was it was not outside the tackle box. So the tackle box is tackle to tackle and beyond three yards, more than three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. So the ball was snapped at the 28-yard line. And this contact is going to occur right at three yards. It's right at the 31. It's just on the outside edge of the tackle box. And so this contact in the tackle box is legal. The theory there is because in the tackle box, you've got a lot of bodies. The back ha doesn't know where the hits are coming from. He has to have the ability to try to get small, absorb those blows. And we didn't want to prohibit the back from at least lowering his head to try to protect himself and absorb some of these blows that may come from different angles. So in the tackle box, it's legal. This is a legal act, and you'll see the replay of it. There is crown contact. He was heading in a direct line to the defender, but within three yards of the line of scrimmage, that is legal under the current rule. Two plays, interesting plays from the first two weeks that involve kicking plays. Here we have a kickoff. And the ruling on the field is a safety, and I just want to talk about what the ruling, um, what it entails. So the key is, if the if the receiving team player possesses the ball in the field of play, so if he possesses the ball in the field of play, and then brings it back into his own end zone, he has put the ball into his own end zone, and he has to get it out. If he doesn't, it's a safety. If he possesses the ball with any part of the football breaking the plane of the goal line, then it's a touchback because the kick has put the ball, the kicking team has put the ball into the end zone. So the key is when he possesses the football, is the entire football breaking the plane of, of the goal line outside. It has to be basically the entire ball outside of the goal line, the plane of the goal line. If it's outside and he brings it back in, it's a safety. If any part of that ball is breaking the plane when he, when he gains control of it, possession of it, then you have a touchback. Unless he brings it out, then he's on his own and he can advance it. So here you're going to see, forget about the feet. The feet don't, don't, don't have anything to do with it. It's the football. Where is the ball in relation to the goal line when the player gains possession of it? If the entire ball is beyond the goal line and he brings it back into the end zone, it's on him and you have a safety if he takes a knee. If the ball is breaking the plane of the goal line at this point and he takes a knee, it's a touchback. The ruling on the field was a safety. Not a, not a goal line shot to confirm that. It did go to replay, and the ruling on the field stood. But the key is the football in relation to the goal line, not the player's body. And then the last play, really interesting play on a punt. The kicking team is going to possess the football in the field of play and then throw it back out to the five-yard line. So the key on any kicking play, if the kicker's recover a kick it's dead once the kickers possess a kick whether it's a punt or an onside kick a free kick you see the onside kick when the kickers recover they can't advance it a muff punt 
Kickers cannot advance it if they recover it because it's still a kick, and by rule, when the kickers recover a kick, it's dead. So here, when this player possesses the football, think of a catch, control two feet, have it long enough to do something with it. Once he gains possession of it, as soon as he releases it, it's dead. It's dead, and basically all of this action is dead ball action and doesn't matter. So here, Tennessee, the receiving team is going to get the football at the one-yard line because the kicking team possessed it there. That's the key. Going to look at a good replay of it. Possession, and this player actually does the smart thing by letting it go because if he carries it into the end zone, even after gaining possession, it's a touchback. Once he gains possession of it and lets it go, it's the receiving team's ball at the one-yard line, even if the ball bounces into the end zone, subsequently bounces into the end zone. So kickers recover a kick. It's dead at that point. They gain possession of it at the one. He lets it go. That's where they're going to get it. So an interesting play. Handled correctly. Went to review. Handled correctly. And it was Tennessee's ball at the one-yard line. That's the media video. Appreciate your attention. And please let us know if we can be of any help to you.